How's it going, folks? And welcome back. We are in the end game of Park to Prem. Today, we have the Club World Cup. And well, to kick things off, we've been drawn in a group with Independiente and Wydad Casablanca, who I think, are, are they from Morocco? They are from Morocco. So uh, two teams that we've never played before, which is quite refreshing at this point in the save game. Two games that I expect us to win. And well, whilst I'm not going to be here for next league season, I might have sold a player for a club record fee since we were last here. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a mo. Yes, folks, how is it going? This is episode number 63 of Park to Prem. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday. And while we are in the summer, it is the 18th of June, which is sooner than I would normally come back if we were doing a transfer special. And while Talha Chabuk, at 21 years old, has left the building. And I'll be honest with you, this was a tricky kind of decision to make, but Newcastle expressed some interest in him. He wanted to leave us. To be honest, in the last 12 months, he hasn't developed at all, to the point where I have some concerns that he might have hit his potential very early, the 21-year-old. And so ultimately, when they bid £170 million for a man who was our backup this year... I couldn't really say no. Uh, so yeah, Chibuk has left the building. A player who we, of course, picked up only a few years ago for 63 million. But the fee that they were offering was just way, way, way too much. We already have a ready-made replacement in the first team, who, to be honest, probably deserved more first-team football than he got in David Lind. And uh, well, with that in mind, it was just a little bit of a no-brainer. And well, in terms of the finances... They look rather good. £200 million in transfer budget, £264 million in the overall balance. Of course, we are just doing the Club World Cup. However, I'd be interested to know your opinions. Should I be spending the money before I resign and leave the club? Or should I leave it to my successor? Uh, let me know what you think on that one. Now, of course, last episode we had the Champions League final. Today we're back with the Club World Cup, which by comparison is a, a weird competition to judge the importance of it comes around once every four years. It's in the summer. Of course, the Club World Cup is undergoing reforms in real life. And as a result, it's becoming this kind of celebration of continental football every four years. And while we are in it, we're in a group of three. The plan of attack today to take on Independiente, who are one of the better teams in South America, and see what we can do against them. They are a team that, if we just look at things, have a good squad, Thomas Riquelme is their key man, but in reality, we should beat them fairly convincingly. And then after that, we've got Wydad Casablanca, who are, I assume, the Moroccan champions. I mean, they are a, a club that have a pretty massive-looking stadium from the, the looks of things. I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about Wydad Athletic Club. I'm sure there'll be some viewers from Morocco who will be able to fill us in a little bit better. But nevertheless, it's kind of refreshing, I suppose, to take on a slightly different team. In terms of their key man, it's this guy, Sufyan Ben Ali, who, uh, well, he's not great, is he? So for this competition, we are allowed to register a squad of 23, and then we're allowed a load of subs per game. Basically, the entire registered team can be on the bench. As a result, this is the team that we're going with. I'm sorry to the fans of Stephen Gold, Jones, Butterworth, uh, Aris and Pabon. They've not been registered for the competition. Uh, you can get angry, you can get shouty, but ultimately, they're just not really good enough, <laughs> to be honest. And with the registration rules we have, they played their final game. They had their moment in the FA Cup. Now we're taking things seriously. I want to finish the series by being crowned the best team in the world. I feel like that is the, the definitive endpoint. If you're wondering why I pulled a funny face then, I've got a Guinness glass on my desk. I've not been drinking Guinness, just to be clear. Uh, nearly knocked it off the desk, gesturing. Um, I hope that's not a bad omen for things to come today. Now, if you've never played in the Club World Cup, you won't have experienced this. But if you have, you'll know what I'm about to say. Fitness in this competition is an absolute nightmare. It's a competition that goes on through the summer, so the players haven't had a proper rest. Some of them have been on international duty as recently as last week. And as a result, despite the fact that nothing's going on, there's a distinct lack of match fitness and just an abundance of players, as you can see here, who really aren't 100% fit. So as a result, this is the team that we're going to play. It's kind of a combination of picking players who are are fit enough to play, but also players who I think can get us the best possible result. Plan of attack is to get a good result against Independiente and then against Wydad Casablanca. We will perhaps rotate things around a little bit. But anyway, we're going to submit the team here. Of course, we in previous Club World Cups as part of Park to Prem. We've had some pretty memorable matches. We once had a game where Shvetsov scored 10 goals 
against Supersport, a South African team. And whilst I don't really expect anyone to do a Shrets of and score 10 goals in a game in this competition, I mean, it'd be nice to think about, wouldn't it? Let's dream, let's dream it could happen. Anyway, we've got an early chance here. Well, I say that, that might be premature because actually it's them in possession bringing it forward. Although uh, Leonardo's going to mop up the pieces. Uh, a couple of rotated players in. McIntosh, one such player in the team today. David Linden, Elpert at left back. Cheric currently out with a little bit of a knock. Collins is also in at centre back. So there has actually been a fair bit of rotation for this game. You can see the full rabble along the bottom. And I guess uh, Panariello and Lind, you'd look at as maybe not full strength 11 players, but make no mistake, they're bloody good footballers. They should be doing a job against the Argentine team here. Anyway, we've got Zambergen running down the far side. Can he get the ball into the middle? There's a few options there. Lopez is one of them. Unfortunately, he should be called Hypez. Because that header went over the crossbar. I don't know about anyone else, but in a save game like this, when you have, you know, built yourself up, become the dominant force, you become well-versed with lots of teams in Europe. It's quite refreshing just to see some different teams that we're taking on today. In reality, we should be winning both these games convincingly and really setting ourselves up in the best po possible position for the knockouts. Um, but, I mean, at the moment, Independiente are actually putting up a little bit of a fight, which I don't appreciate. You know, I was hoping for a nice chilled-out game. Save player fitness, maybe lower the tempo to start to time waste late on just to maintain fresh legs. Oh, my word. Is he off? Is he on? I don't know. Lopez has just scored a volley. Is that? I think, I think it's going to count. If it counts, it's a mad goal. Like the ball to him is a weird one, but the actual finish itself on the volley as the ball dropped over his shoulders is absolutely insane. It was Elpert, I think, with it. Or was it Elpert? No, it wasn't. It was Horniak with the ball through on his right foot. And, uh, well, that finish, not too shabby. Now, you might have caught it in the intro or just at some point in this video. This year's Club World Cup is being held in a uh, rainy Scotland. I was about to say sunny Scotland, but it's literally raining in-game. We're currently playing at Ibrox as well, so it's not a massive road trip for us. And, well, maybe I should send Lopez on a road trip. He's just missed an open goal. Horniak in possession, gives it to Erlen Haaland. Of course, Horniak very nearly made that move to Newcastle that Chabuk has now made. He decided to stay at the club. Chabuk had no such loyalties. And well, to be honest, I'm kind of glad we've kept Horniak. He's been, been rather important for us over the last 12 months. And while well, he could be important today, Alpert bringing it forward, puts it into the box. Zamberg and back post, tap in, doubles our lead on the, uh, well, just after the 30 minute mark. Panariello bringing the ball forward, floats it towards Lopez, who looked offside. He finishes it. I mean, as I said, it looked offside. The Independente player seems certain it was offside. Is it going to count, though? Has Lopez timed that run to perfection? I'll tell you what, he absolutely has. And while the goal kick, won by Lind, Panariello brings it forward and then dinks it. And I can only assume it's the right back, number 36 on the near side, playing him on. In the end, Lopez scores it. And at three goals up, I guess there's a temptation maybe at halftime to just rest a few players because... Much like international football, if you've ever done that, the Club World Cup, by the latter knockout stages, just all your players are exhausted and just basically dead on the football pitch. So being in a position like this maybe gives us an opportunity to rest the players. In fact, I'm not going to slow down the kind of pace now. Let's rest the players, chill out a little bit. We don't need to press as much. We can just relax. It's the summer holiday for the players. I just shouldn't be overworking them. We are on the attack again here. Panariello to Penner, who is playing inverted wing back today, gives it to Zambergen. He pulls it back. Kiba gets a hand to it. Lopez has an effort. It's saved away. Great opportunity for us to score there. Sadly squandered. And at the hour mark, it's time to make changes. Look at how tired our players are here, right? David Lind off for Tullio. I was going to bring in Fontana, but he's actually very tired despite not starting. Elsewhere, I'm going to bring in Gura Jagger, I think, for Zambergen. And I have one last sub, and you know what, middle B on the Haaland. Unless, do I have more subs? Oh, wait, wait, no, I've subbed off a player who I've subbed on there. Do we get more subs in this game? No, we don't. For some reason, I had this vague idea in my head that because it's a pre-season tournament, maybe we would be allowed extra subs or something, but sadly not the case. Anyway, Guru fresh off the bench and bringing it forward. He is, however, going to give it away in this second half. We've not created as much, but given our instructional changes just to try and, well, just save fitness as much as anything, that's not entirely surprising. Miguel, all the way to the byline, pulls it back. First effort on goal that we've seen, I think, for Independente there. Unfortunately, headed just over the crossbar. 
Elpert with the ball for us at left back. Gives it to Horniak. Nice little build up play here. Middle B on the pitch now. Lays it wide. Ball played forward to Lopez, who's on for the hat trick. And I'll tell you what, the keeper's done really, really well to deny him there. Okay, full time here. A 3 0 win. Second half. We chilled out a little bit more. We let them back into the game, perhaps. But at the end of the day, we need to manage the squad. I don't want unnecessary injuries. In case it isn't obvious, I do actually really want to win this competition over the next few episodes. And I know that the knockouts are where it's going to get brutal. First few games, I feel like they're a little bit about squad management. And, well, what we've done there is managed expectations, got a win. Zambergen's got man of the match. And, uh, well, now we just have to prepare for the small matter of why dad Casablanca in four days' time. Anyway, we're going to get straight into that next game. There might be a little bit of transfer business. If there is, I'll keep you in the loop. Let's go forward and uh, we'll hopefully make it two wins in two and make it to that knockout stage, shall we? Okay, game number two against Why Dad Casablanca. Can't recall ever playing them in my 20 years of playing football managers. So if nothing else, it's a unique occasion to save her from that angle. In terms of this game, if we win it, we are guaranteed to make it out the group. It's worth noting that only the top team out of the three teams in each group actually make it through, unlike the expanded World Cup format where two or three teams from each group will go through. So as a result, we do actually kind of need to win this one. And the way the scheduling's worked out means that we actually have a slightly bigger gap because why Dad Casablanca and Independente still have to play after this game. So if we can get things wrapped up here, fantastic. I rested the players between games. In fact, you can see here the players are still rested now. As you can tell, though, condition is a problem everywhere. So the fact that we're going to have that longer kind of break upcoming is nice. But I am going to have to just rotate things around here. Give me a mo. I'm going to fix this. This is an absolute mess. Okay, so in terms of team selections, this is the best selection I can do that kind of juggles match fitness and condition, match load, and just making sure that when I guess the best possible position to not get any injuries and hopefully be more refreshed for the knockouts. So it does mean that Gurajag is coming in, Heinz Winter as well, De Silva plays, Haaland is not really fit but to be honest compared to everyone else in the team he also kind of is uh in midfield we are going to go with george and then david lind who is struggling a little bit is going to have to play here elsewhere claudio sanchez returns from injury to play right back uh john joe Boya is going to slot in at center back today which is a position he can play naturally but maybe a slight gap in his game aerially nevertheless with this rotated team which i'll be honest is an absolute shambles of a team we probably should still be winning. Oh, and if you were wondering, I haven't really done any transfer business in the last few days. I was so preoccupied by just making sure the players were rested and that I was ready for this game against Casablanca. The whole kind of transfer thing is still a little bit of a distraction, I feel like, almost. Uh, yeah, I'm still umming and ahhing about whether or not I should be making transfers or if I just save the money. Equally, if I was to spend the money, I don't know what I would spend it on. Maybe I should just hoard a load of regens before I leave. Like, sign a load of 16-year-olds who won't join the club for two years. That way, the new manager, even if he completely ballses everything up, at least there's some good players joining for years to come. Although, they've just scored after 10 minutes. Butaleb, that was a mad goal. Maybe, you know what? I thought this was going to be the straightforward game out the two today. That... Makes things interesting very early on, doesn't it? Benali brings it forward. Of course, we have got a bit of a mess of a team, but nevertheless, we should be doing better than this. Butaleb steps up. And I mean, I'll be honest, it's one of the best finishes I've seen all year in Football Manager. That was mad. I mean, suddenly at 1-0, this is interesting. Suddenly at 1-0, I'm nervous. I thought that this might be a bit of a formality, but apparently, why dad want to make things interesting? Sabah with the ball for them now. I mean, they're knocking the ball around well. Statistically, first 15 minutes, they've done fine. They've created more than us, arguably. Ball played for. Butaleb gets his noggin on it. Unfortunately for them, Boyu is going to read it. Leonardo, wide to Elpert, who is very tired at left back, but I don't really have an alternative. Heinz Windu, who scored in that Champions League final, is through the middle. He gets absolutely hacked down there. And, I mean, surely that should be a yellow card at the very least for the centre-back. I know there's the double jeopardy rule where if a man's a last man and he fouls in the penalty area, there'll be a penalty and a yellow card, but only if he's actually played the ball. It didn't look like the guy played the ball there. I'm kind of surprised he's got away without even a booking. Hopefully, De Silva, who, of course, missed the end of last season, is going to be able to score here for us. He does. He puts it down the middle, makes it 1-1. Okay, that takes the pressure off us a little bit. We can calm down slightly. And uh, kind of nice to see De Silva on the pitch, isn't it, really? He missed the entirety of the tail end of the league season and the championship 
I was about to say the championship final. No, the Champions League playoff final. It's been a little while since we're in the championship. Anyway, Elpa, who I talked about being tired, has now picked up a knock, which is a little bit scary. And while George has just scored a header, I think this is onside. I don't know why we're checking this with VAR. I'm just going to ignore it. I think this is going to count. And if it does, I might be tempted to take Elpert and his knock off because his heart is almost depleted. Right, it was a lovely assist, Elpert, but you've done your job. Unfortunately, the other options I've got are to bring in Chirich, who failed a fitness test, or move McIntosh or Sanchez to left back and bring on someone else. I think, to be honest, that is probably my best bet here. I'm going to move in Collins in at centre back and then move McIntosh to left wing back. It's not exactly an ideal change, but we'll do it because we don't really have an alternative. Oh my word, De Silva's free kick hits the crossbar and goes over. We were a goal down and I feel like the players took that personally. We look a little bit angry, a little bit mean in this game here. Ball played forward, Collins wins the header, Gorazaga now to Sanchez on the overlap. Much like last game, I wouldn't mind building up a cushion and then just slowing everything down. Winter looked offside there, he is going to finish it. That isn't going to count, is it? The players aren't celebrating, they know... I know. It wasn't a bad little volley in the end, but what was a good finish is irrelevant because he went early. And, uh, well, to be fair, why did Casablanca played a pretty good line there? But Heinz Winter, you can see just half a yard offside. It wasn't far, but offside is offside. 40 minutes gone here. There or thereabouts. Slightly less if we want to be really pedantic, but we are on the attack again. I wouldn't mind building up a cushion as the ball's played forward to Winter who very ambitiously volleys it. It would have been one of the goals of the series if it went in. Unfortunately, it's gone over, but there's certainly a fair few chances fall in Winter's way. It feels only a matter of time before he gets the goal. Guru Jagger, there is options in the middle, including Winter, holds it up, gets hacked down by the, the defender, and it could be a second penalty for us. I mean, why did Casablanca start this game superbly, but they are now shooting themselves in the foot repeatedly giving away these penalties. It's going to be De Silva to have it again. Can he make it two penalties in two today? The number nine steps up. He hits it on his left foot. Their keeper is stood rooted to the spot. He can't get down to it. And we make it 3-1. Okay, half time in this game. 3-1 to the good. We've looked like the better team after that early scare as they scored an absolute screamer. Um, kind of scared about the fact that I'm being told Erlen Haaland is really tired and needs a rest. I'll be honest, when you look across the entire team, they're all kind of tired and need a rest. So with that in mind, I'm going to just ask the players to dribble less, lower tempo, play the ball out the back. Let's just, you know, chill out a little bit. Hold our shape and regroup. Distribute to the defenders. Slow the pace down. Basically, at this point, I'm doing absolutely everything in my power to save our legs. Because whilst we are going to get a little bit of a gap before the knockouts begin, at 3-1, I feel like this game is done. But when you look across the team, we are exhausted. At 4-1, I'm going to say it now, it's definitely done. It's now time just to manage this game. Sanchez at inverted wing back gives it to Gurujaga. This patient passing style of play, this slower tempo, you can kind of feel it in the match engine. Players just dwelling on the ball that little bit more. Looking for the right pass, looking for the right move. There is the pass. There is the move. Heinz Winter scores it. I think this will count. Uh, I'll tell you what, VAR is getting... It's wages worth today. The guy who operates VAR, give him a raise. He has been involved in absolutely everything, it feels like, in this game. Heinz Winter has scored it, though, for his 20th goal of the season. De Silva played it long. Winter, great touchdown. Second touch, got it out of his feet, found the bottom corner, makes it 5-1. If it wasn't game over already, it definitely is now. Collins with the ball for us here. De Silva, Lind. Back to Collins. We look very, very solid in this game. We almost look more solid since I've made all the tactical changes to try and make us, well, calmer, I suppose, and just less runny aroundy. I wish there was almost a save your legs option you could tick in Football Manager where it just kind of changes your tactic to one where you're preserving fitness. Either way, Gurujag is in a wide area trying to do some of his little tricksy magic. Does a little flick to Sanchez. He floats it back post. George is unmarked. 6-1. I mean, if you were worried after 10 minutes, there wasn't much point in being worried. Am I right to be concerned? Am I right to be worried about the players' welfare here? We seem like we're barely able to run at the moment with the way the players' fitness has depleted. I guess the good news is this game is done. So even if we were to completely run out of steam, I think we will still end up getting the victory. Gurujaga down the line, whips it in, Winter's there. 
he makes it 7-1. I kind of feel bad for them now. I mean, I, I don't know why the player fitness is so bad. I know I'm going on about it a lot. It's a weird issue that just happens at the Club World Cup. Okay, as if things can get worse for Casablanca, they've now had a man get sent off. Now, whether or not that red card carries on into continental competition, or maybe he's now just suspended from whichever Club World Cup they turn up for next, I'm not entirely sure. I doubt we're going to score here. The ball's going to be cleared away. Surely that is that. Zamberg, and maybe with one last effort to put a final nail in the coffin. No, the referee blows on the whistle. He applies mercy to Casablanca. And it is going to finish 7-1 here. And uh, to be honest, when you look at the XG, maybe that flattered us slightly. You know what? I was really looking forward to this competition and the adventure it could offer. I've just seen who we've been drawn against. We play them in five days' time. So that rest I talked about doesn't really exist. Manchester United at Ibrox. Our bitter rivals. Our rivals that developed in the save game, of course, through playing them regularly... And while it wouldn't be right, would it, to play in one last competition if we weren't going to be drawn against them today, that is how we're going to start Monday. And uh, well, hopefully we, we'll do that game and then also the semi-final. That's the plan in my head. And then the final we'll do, and then we can have the end of season wrap up a bit at the end of that final where we're christened the best team in the world. Or maybe I'm just salty and bitterly disappointed. Uh, I guess you'll have to tune in next week to find out. Thank you for watching as always today. We are back on Monday with more. I'm going to rest up. The players are going to rest up. Hopefully you get a nice rest up over the weekend too. And I'll see you on Monday for more. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you all next time. I'm out.